All right. So, so far we've done, you know, some fun stuff. <laughs> we've rationalized the denominator when we had a square root. We've done it with a cubed root and we've done it with a fourth root. But if you notice, every single one of these examples has a monomial, like a single term on the bottom. It does not have two terms. What I mean by that is, check this out. I want to rationalize again, but I don't know. What am I on? Example four, example five. What if I have two over two minus the square root of five? Now the denominator has two terms instead of one. Now it has this one that's not a radical and this one that is. How do you approach rationalizing this denominator? Well, it's not that bad. You take the conjugate. That is not spelled right. The conjugate of the denominator. You're going to hear conjugate also when I talk about complex numbers, but the conjugate of the denominator. And a conjugate is basically the same two terms. So two and then a square root of five. It's just the sign in the middle changes. So it creates, every time you use conjugates in your life, <laughs> in your algebra life, it creates a difference of squares, basically. That is not how you say <laughs> A difference of squares, okay? It creates a difference of squares. That's the idea um, behind the conjugate because I'll show you in a sec, and when I multiply this, um, I'll show you in a second. Before I do that, anything I do to the bottom of a fraction, I have to do to the top to maintain its value. Because technically you're multiplying by one. Anything divided by itself is one. Multiply the top, multiply the bottom by that. Now, when I multiply this denominator by its conjugate, it turns into a FOIL situation, right? Because it's a basically like a binomial times a binomial. Like that's a FOIL situation. So in the denominator, I'm going to show you why this conjugate is great and how it creates a difference of squares. When you do your first, two times two is four, and you do your outer, two times the square root of five is two times the square root of five. I cannot multiply the two and the five because one is inside the radical and one is outside. Um, my, my inner, this bothers me when this is not, my inner, okay, I'm happy now. My inner negative square root of five times two, which is the opposite of two times the square root of five. And then last, well, a negative times a positive is a negative. Square root of five times the square root of five is five. We've done enough of those. So, I mean, technically, if you show your work, the square root of five times the square root of five is the square root of five squared or 25, which simplifies into five. At the, um, once I do enough of these, where I multiply a square root of something times the square root of the same thing, I don't have to show all that. I know it's going to simplify into whatever was underneath the radical. Um, so the square root of five times the square root of five is five. Now, <clears throat> This is first, outer, inner, and last. When you do a difference of squares, when you multiply the two factors, the two binomials that create a difference of squares, the outer and inner cancel, and it creates just the first minus the last, a difference of two squared cases, which is exactly what this creates. But it's represented, you know, numerically. Four minus five is negative one. Boom, I rationalized the denominator. There is no radical there anymore because the conjugate Making that difference of squares gets rid of the radical part. Because whenever you multiply a square root times a square root, it cancels the square root. You're trying to get rid of that in the denominator. So it cleans up nicely. Well, let's look at the top. Now, some of you can leave it. It depends on what your instructor wants. What you're... Some of you leave it this way. Some of you distribute. Um, I'm going to leave it this way because of how I want to represent my solution. So I have two times the quantity two plus the square root of five, and that is all divided by negative one, which means I can rewrite that as negative two times two plus the square root of five, and that is my final answer. If you distribute that, then you'll get negative four minus two times the square root of five 
which is also the same thing. One of them is in factored form, one of them is distributed, which all fine and dandy, whatever the heck you want to do, it doesn't really matter. Um, unless your instructor, your professor states that they want it a certain way, but both of them are correct. Or, you know, if you're doing an online, um, my open math or whatever it is, if you're doing something online, you know, pay attention to how they want their result. So let's do one more of these. Example six. And I'm gonna make it up. <laughs> let's do a three, square root of three, minus, this might be ugly at the end of the day. I might make it ugly. Minus the square root of two over, let's do a square root of two x <laughs> plus, <laughs> I'm laughing because it's gonna probably be ugly in the numerator, plus whatever, square root of five. All right, I want to rationalize the denominator. Rationalize the denominator. So you're gonna have a combination of, you know, different types of scenarios. You know, you're gonna have to look at, it's gonna, you're gonna be told rationalize, period, or divide. And you're gonna have to decipher between whether or not you're gonna do this method, right? Where you multiply by, you know, the square root of whatever to create pairs, or, you know, do you create triples? Or do you create fours? Or do you use a conjugate? So I'm looking at this and I see the denominator has two terms because of the plus, which means that I'm gonna use a conjugate method. I'm gonna do the conjugate of the denominator. That's, that's how I choose to do this because of the fact that there's more than one term there. Otherwise I would say, well, if there's one term there, one you know, situation, then you know, if it's a square root, I'm looking for pairs. If it's a cube root, I'm looking for triples. If it's a fourth root, I'm looking for fours. Here I have two terms. So I'm looking for a conjugate. Conjugate is not difficult. I just copy the two terms down. I'm looking for the conjugate of the denominator. Copy the first term, copy the second term and just change the sign in the middle. And whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. Boom. Now I actually have to do the work, let's multiply it. Now, like I said, the conjugate creates a difference of squares. So I have to multiply and foil this. My last example had a single term on the top. So you could have chosen to keep it in factored form or distribute. In this situation, I have two terms on top. I'm gonna to foil top and foil the bottom. Foil and foil. So now I'm gonna multiply the stuff in the numerator and the stuff in the denominator, but let's start with the denominator. First, multiply the two terms this times this. Not difficult because the square root of something times the square root of the same thing is itself, right? Over here, the square root of five times the square root of five was five. So the square root of two X times the square root of two X is two X, only with square roots. Outer, now because I'm multiplying a square root times a square root, and both of them are under the square root, I must move too fast that this uh, does that. That means that I'm allowed to multiply those uh, you know, values or numbers underneath the square root. Both of them are under the same you know, square root sign. So the two can be multiplied by the five this time. A positive times a negative is negative, and the two times five is 10 times X under the square root, right? Because it's a square root times a square root. My inner, I have a plus times a plus, so this is positive. Square root of five times square root of two X. The five can be multiplied by the two because they're both under a square root. You know, and then last and positive times a negative is negative. Square root of five times square root of five is five. Now, most of the time, because of the fact that I'm using a conjugate, which creates a difference of squares, which I know is gonna cancel the outer and inner. Sometimes I literally ignore this part and do just do first and last. Just do the first and do the last. I don't waste my time with outer and inner because they're gonna cancel anyway. That's just, you know, a saving time because technically I'm supposed to do that, but I'm not showing that work, right? If I, you know, skip this, if I literally just write first and last, I skip this part because I know they're gonna cancel. 
if you know if you're uncomfortable with not writing that down that's fine you know write it down but most of the time i don't write this part down if i'm multiplying conjugates because of the fact that they're always going to cancel so why waste my time <laughs> all right um let's do the numerator foil first square root of three times square root of 2x. That 3 can be multiplied by that 2 because they're both under square root, square root of 6x. Outer, this time I actually want to multiply the outer. Square root of 3 times the square root of 5, and there's the minus, is the square root of 15. My inner is a negative times a positive, which is negative. Square root of 2 times square root of 2x, which is the square root of 4x which I noticed can be simplified because four is a perfect square. And last, a negative times a negative is positive. Square root of two times square root of five, square root of 10. And then I'm gonna simplify. Um, let's go across the top first. I cannot simplify the square root of six X, so let's leave it. I cannot simplify the square root of 15, let's leave it. Why? Because it's not a perfect square. And there's no factor that is a perfect square. I can simplify this four, take it out into a two, but that X stays inside. And I can't simplify the square root of 10 because there's no perfect square either within it or it is not a perfect square. These cancel, so I'm left with a two X minus five. <sighs> Technically I rationalize the denominator because there's no radical sign down there. And I want to look at this and go, can I simplify any more? Do I have like radicals in the numerator? I don't see any like radicals because like radicals not only have to have the same index, but also the same thing underneath the radical sign. This has a 6x, 15x, none of them match. So there are no like radicals in the numerator. So that can't be pulled together. And the denominator, they're, like, they're unlike terms also. I can't cancel things. Like I can't cancel this two and this two because there's subtraction. It's not multiplication. So this, is, <laughs> this is literally my answer if I'm keeping it in this form. And this is how we would keep it based on the ugliness of this problem. But still, it's the same concept. It's the same idea. We're using conjugates. It doesn't matter how the end result looks. The initial process is the same, okay? So, um, you know, you have a single term in the, in the denominator. You're either creating pairs if it's a square root, you know, uh, cubes if it's a cube root, you know, fours if it's a fourth root, or if there's two terms in the denominator, you're looking for the conjugate, <clears throat> the conjugate of the denominator, and you multiply the top and bottom by that and simplify as much as you can using all your rules of radical expressions. So, not as bad as it seems. You guys can do it. Um, let me know if you have any questions.